star of this movie are Simon, the wonderfully talented and uh, and amazing Nick Robinson coming up. <laughs> and next I'll introduce his thoughtful mother, entrepreneur, actor, bagel baker, Mr. Dan Garner. <laughs> And of course, as Simon's well-meaning but sometimes tone-deaf father, the amazing scratch golfing Josh Dunnell. Did you like it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Isn't he great? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so you guys all come to this movie. They're a nice family, aren't they? Didn't they do such a nice job with this guy? Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. It's so unattractive. <laughs> when each of you got this script, was there a particular scene that leapt out at you that said, "Gosh, I really want to play that scene," or I have a thought about how this will this will go that uh, that made you want to do this? And we'll start with you. Um, I think there were several scenes. The one, um, kind of all of the sequences of coming out. So the first coming out scene between. Alex and I, I thought, was handled really delicately and kind of beautifully and not too heavy-handed. Um, and it was hard to get that from the script, but after talking to Greg, I felt confident that he would be able to kind of bring the delicacy that it needed. And um, uh, and then also the scenes between um, Josh and Jen, just because they were so beautifully written and I felt like kind of necessary. Um, for this whole journey that this Simon character goes on. So those were both exciting for me. Um, and the dance sequence, obviously, because, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> and you said? I thought this scene um, between Emily and her son is just like a template for how moms mm -hmm. can handle a moment like this. And selfishly, I really wanted to be the one to say it. And I was talking to a friend of mine as I was trying to decide, do I try to do this, is this movie gonna work? And he said, you know, this movie would have been really helpful for me when I was growing up. This this would have been a big deal for me. And I just said, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm doing it, you got it. Are we talking about which scene in particular? I, I forgot. Yeah, I know the question was, you, can, you may answer this question or another one, I can throw you another one, but I was asking um, what scene when you read the script really stood out for you as a scene you wanted to, wanted to play? Well, that's easy. It was the scene with, with Nick and I uh, in the driveway. I mean, there's several reasons I wanted to do the movie, but that, if, if you're going to ask me what scene, it's that one, because I think that this, this character represents maybe a lot of fathers out there who found out that their sons were, were gay, were their daughters. Um, he wasn't necessarily homophobic, but he was, like you said, tone deaf to a lot of things, and probably wasn't as tuned in as he should have been and learns through the reveal that, you know what, it doesn't matter. I love you no matter what. And I think that there's something really powerful in that. Now, all three of you have been in high school movies, have played young people, are playing young people. Now you two are playing the parents and not, not, the, uh, not the protagonist. In Thanks story. for reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> Very young. Um, we had him when we were what, eight. <laughs> um, well, it's good. You, you did a good job, as I said. It's nice that you were able to cobble things together as eight-year-old parents. Don't say that. <laughs> um, seriously, as as people have been in his spot and who have who have played, you know, in youth movies and now playing parents, do you bring something special, some special insight? And what makes this different from maybe the generation of youth movies that you know that you were auditioning for or working in? Well, it, for me, it was it was many things. I, Greg Berlanti is one of my favorite people in the world. I loved, I did a movie with him several years ago called Life As We Know It, uh, and we've made, remained friends ever since. Uh, I felt it had this, and especially after seeing it, it had like this John Hughes sort of coming of age sort of feel to it, which I loved, and I loved it. After seeing it, I loved the music in the movie. That's so important, right? In a movie, if you're trying to reach a, a younger audience, the joie de vivre, the mu the music, the just overall energy of it, and Greg really, he really yeah. understands that. And it doesn't matter whether you're paying, playing the parents or whether you're 
playing the protagonist, it's still, you still have to kind of bring that energy into a movie like this. It was fun to do. Right. One last question, because I know you're all itching to ask questions. Who were you guys in high school? Do you see yourselves in these characters, or who do you think you would be if, if we were looking at this film and saying, that's, that's Jen Garner in high school? Oh, man. I'll let you guys handle that one. <laughs> Um, I feel like uh, high school. I don't think anyone in high school is actually like kind of the best version of themselves. But I was, I was, um, I felt like I was kind of the guy who could go from group to group and kind of get along, you know, just get by. Um, I don't know if I'd like classify any particular, you know, uh, clique that I fell into, but um, just, you know, just average guy. Yeah. 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 So modest. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's true though. I mean, you were the jock. <laughs> no, I, well, I did play sports, right? But like Nick, kind of a but like Nick, I had friends. <laughs> I, had, I had friends with Metallica jackets and smoked cigarettes out back too. You know, I, I was very, I was. I, I, I so was you wrong. got along with both sets of bullies in your high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was like Nick. I was the guy who tried to, you know. Be is 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 uh, available to or, or accepting or friendly to everybody. I really did. I don't think I even rated a, a character in this. Movie. I, but I mean, I was happy. I didn't think about the fact that because I, I was in West Virginia. I don't know. We just either we didn't pay attention or I didn't pay attention to popular clicks or anything like that. Um, you know, I played the saxophone and I danced every day after school and I babysat a lot and, um, you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know if, like, what's your takeaway from working with Josh and Jennifer because, like, they've had, like, a long career and when they started out, headshots were black and white. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> that was good. That is correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, the main Only because they were artsy. There's <laughs> that Metallica jacket. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, my main takeaway was that these guys are professionals and that they show up every day. That's about it. No, I'm just kidding. It was like, um, I kind of, it, it really was like the perfect casting, I think, because it was the... The, the coolest parents you know, and that's these two, and it was like they really understood what Simon was going through, and it showed too, like even when you have the best possible upbringing, best possible scenario, like this journey that Simon goes on of coming out is still difficult, it's still hard, even when you have the best case scenario. So um, I thought that it was, the, it was a great. <laughs> I guess it did make me think about how I would react, and, you know, I have, I truly just want my kid to be happy and to be passionate about whatever he is that he loves, um, and if he happened, if he, if, if, that, if he came out as, if he, if he was gay, so be it, you know, if that makes him happy, I truly believe that that's what it would be, and it's, maybe it's because I've, you know, I waited a while before I became a a parent, I'm not as, you know, I've, I've seen a lot, I'm, I know what, you know, I, I have a lot of gay friends, um, and so it doesn't, I don't really, I really don't care, I just want to, I just want everybody to have, to live, be their highest self, you know, and if that's what it is, that's what it is, I don't, I, it really doesn't bother me. But also, our kids are growing up in such a different time where my, my, kids are growing up saying, oh, someday when I get married, I don't know if I'll marry a man or a woman. They really, that, that, that door is open in a way that it never has been, and they really do know, oh, this is so-and-so, and this is his husband, and this is so-and-so, and this is her wife, and that has completely been normalized for, at least for my kids, and hopefully will be for this whole next generation. So I, I think it would be um, a conversation that 
you know, if that somebody would be a part of, hopefully me, but, you know, somebody in their lives would be a part of from a much earlier stage so that it wouldn't ha be as involved with, like, the teen angst at the same time. But I, I certainly, you know, my kids would know that I'd be super gung-ho. Awesome. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that be amazing if we hit, if we hit today's youth like a John Hughes movie? What could possibly, you know, be a higher compliment to Greg? And certainly, we would all all feel the the kind of reflected glory of that. Um, I have read the book. I read the script first, though. Uh, I was first introduced to the story through Greg, who had this script that he was kind of champion championing, and. Um, it was afterwards that I met Becky and I read the book. Uh, and I think that um, everyone, myself included, can relate to Simon and his sort of journey and just like trying to find yourself and come to terms with yourself um, in a way that feels comfortable to not just you, but all the people around you as well. Um, and I feel that Simon, uh, his journey for a lot of it is a, is it's about him sort of tamping himself down, which I think people can relate to, is like, you know, what what kind of person are you when you're constantly trying to uh, please other people and like tamp down your own personality? And I think that that's kind of um, something that, you know, uh, the film deals with really beautifully and it's something that I can totally relate to with Simon as well, um, just being in that position of trying to, um, trying to keep all these balls in the air and, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, get through it, so, um, so, yeah, I think, does that answer your question? I think it does. <laughs> I think exactly like you said, take your power back, and, um, I mean, it's, it's different for everyone, I think, but, uh, it's, just be, um, be bold, be strong and loud, and be happy with what you, you know, be confident in what you're trying to say, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, just, you know, do the dance number to Whitney Houston, I don't know. <laughs> well, he gives, Greg gives you room to play and to find, you know, whatever it is, and, and that's what was really fun about a lot of the stuff that we did. Uh, in particular, I guess the scene, like I said before, the scene that I really wanted to do this movie for was a scene with, with he and I, and I think it was, what? how did it get there? I truly thought about my boy, and if this were to happen, if he were to, if he were to tell me this, how would that affect me? And it just took me to like a really emotional place, just because no, the truly, no matter what, you love your kid, no matter what, and and I think that that, that helped me get to that spot. Um, Nick made it very easy. He's a very, really talented dude and, and was very available. And, you know, it's, 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 it's not easy doing scenes like that. Uh, but, you know, as long as you feel safe to go there and, and, and to just tell the truth as honestly as you can, uh, that's, that's what you hope for. And I guess that's what helped me get there. For me, I was, I honestly, I was thinking about so many friends of mine and thinking, oh, I wish I could go back for them and say this to them. I wish that I could have, you know, I, I wish, I, there have been a couple of friends, especially when I was younger, who, who came out to me and I think, God, please let me have had a moment of wisdom when I was there for that moment. I, I hope that, that I did. Um, but yeah, I was just so filled with love for the whole experience of it. Yeah, I would say it was Greg as well. I would just yeah. reiterate that. He really made his safe space for everyone. Uh, I think everyone has secrets, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like there's like a weight that you can carry around, and the more you talk about it, the better it gets. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's very personal for everyone, I think, this... this uh, idea of like coming out with your secrets and mm -hmm. coming out and, and sort of letting the air in um, and I don't know if there's a right answer really 
for anyone. I think it's a very, no. yeah, I think it's yeah. a very personal thing. I think you're right too. I mean, the more you shine a light on whatever it is that scares you the most, the less scary it becomes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I've I've had, I have family members that went through exactly what these guys or what this family went through, uh, right. and and I watched a very sort of uh, old school dad and mm -hmm. a very sort of accepting mother and how they mm -hmm. dealt with it. And he just got married last year and the dad could not stop crying. He was so happy for uh -huh. his son. You know, so I think that's a good example of, again, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as your kid feels happy, passionate about something, and as long as they're a kind human being at the end of the day, who gives a shit what their sexual orientation is. Well, Elizabeth Gabler at Fox 2000 was really brave to take this movie on. It's, it's not the kind of thing that has been made. I think the power of Greg is, you know, he, his success is um, definitely the motor behind it. But I think the important thing is for people to go out and see it or it won't happen again. So we can live in a world of superheroes and they're awesome and there's a place for it. Or we can support the movies that we want to see more of. And... You know, I I hope that this is one that people will, you know, go and sit in a theater and, and watch as a group and, and enjoy and celebrate. Okay.